Hello everyone and welcome to the online daily communion reading plan, The Piper Pilgrimage. On this reading plan we look at blood promises, we look at all the things that Jesus achieved for us through his blood on the cross. Today is day 8 titled The Power to Choose. I'm going to open with a scripture that we looked at in day 7. But instead of just looking at the opening lines, let's read it all. It's from Genesis 1, 26, and it says this. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Every time I think about God, I love and appreciate him more. He gave us dominion over the earth and he gave us the ways in which then we could exercise that dominion and power. And that's what dominion is. It is the right to choose. I want us to spend some time looking at free will, as I believe this will help us to make sense of things and also help us to be able to understand the next topic. It'll be easy to do, but it does need a little bit of concentration, so please try and concentrate just for a couple of minutes on this part so that it fully makes sense to you. But it will be worth it, I promise, as it's one of those things that people often misunderstand and it'll be good for us to know a way of being able to put that into words and explain it if someone's young in faith or to a non-believer who then next time brings this up as a topic. Most people have heard the basics of the story of the fall, Adam and Eve. God created mankind in his image and put man on the earth that he had created. He gave man power over the earth and over the creatures of the earth. He told them to go and name things and procreate. God also put a tree in the garden and he told them, whatever you do, don't touch that tree. Basically, touch anything else, name anything else, but don't go by that tree. And God wasn't being spiteful. He didn't put a tree there to tempt them or to set a trap as some non-believers or people that don't understand what happened might think. There was good reason that he was telling them not to go by the tree and the tree had to be there. So he was trying to give them as much freedom and warning as possible. It was a very significant tree and if messed with, it would change the order of how the laws and things work on the earth. Satan came and he was manipulative with his words, tempting them and tricked them into eating the fruit from that tree. He did this because this would greatly benefit him. He understood what the tree meant and the impact that that would have on the earth and our relationship with God. And they did it. They ate the fruit from the tree and things changed and we will look at that more tomorrow. As I mentioned earlier, people often misunderstand this part with the tree. If this tree has the ability to unleash so much evil, then why did God the Creator put it in a perfect world? Why even have it there to be messed with, with the degree of risk and harm that it could do? Was it a trap? Was he trying to tempt people? He knew he was out of time, so he knew the consequence that it would have. He knew that sin then would be blocking us from him and that Jesus would have to come and suffer. It just doesn't make sense. We could have had peace on earth. It's cruel. But this isn't the case when you look at it properly. So, free will. As I said, people often misunderstand what free will is. We as mankind were created in God's image with God's qualities, including intelligence, reason and wisdom. Man also had inherent morality, meaning the ability to know right from wrong. So we had all of these things from the start. From the time when we were created, we knew what right and wrong was. People often think that we didn't understand and we didn't have the choice of doing this until Adam and Eve took the fruit. That's when they knew what right and wrong was and it got introduced in the world. That's not right. They knew at the time of creation However, we need to understand what it means to be free, to be truly free. 
to be truly free means you must have the ability to be able to exercise all of those qualities that we just mentioned and be given the opportunity to do so and choose. But in order for us to do that, more is needed. It means we must have within us the ability to make the wrong choice, to choose evil. That also requires opportunity. Without opportunity, we cannot be free to choose. By God setting one tree aside for himself and telling them to not touch it upon pain or death, God was giving Adam and Eve the opportunity to choose for themselves whether they were going to trust God and respect him as a rule maker and creator, or whether they were going to choose to ignore it and do what they wanted to do. What they did was choose to be independent and decide for themselves what would be good and bad. They wanted to be like God, as Satan told Eve she would become if they ate the fruit from the tree that God had set aside and told them not to touch. And so it happened. They did the one thing that God had asked them not to do, and they changed the power and the order of the laws on earth. You see, the tree had to be there it wasn't a trap from God. He gave us real free will. Anything else would have been controlling. If the only options we had ever were to choose good things, then we were not choosing good things because we were good, we'd be choosing them because there's no alternative. And God loves us. He wants us to be truly free. And he gave us clear warning to not go and mess with that tree. Tomorrow, we will look at the cost of not trusting God and find out what happened. Now, if you would like to grab your communion sets, open them, set them aside ready, we will pray and take communion together. Now, if you take your wafer, hold it up and repeat after me. Jesus. Father God, thank you for giving us free will. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for giving us full control of our choices. I'm sorry that as mankind we didn't trust you. I'm sorry that you're misunderstood. When all you have ever done is love and try and protect us. Thank you, Jesus, for willingly coming to be the one that would pay the price for the consequence of the choice we made that day. I am sorry for the sin that caused your suffering. I eat this wafer as a symbol of your body that was broken for me and eat the wafer. Now if you grab your juice, hold it up and repeat after me. Jesus, I thank you for your blood. Thank you for the promises your blood has brought.
thank you for buying us back what we lost. You are the truth and the life. I do this in remembrance of you. And what you did and achieved. Dying on the cross for my sin. And coming back to life to defeat Satan. Regaining power and authority. Thank you for the power of the name of Jesus. Thank you for being with us. I love you, Lord, and drink the juice. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I'm really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow as we discover what happened after Adam and Eve's decision. Take care. God bless.